What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make some bison pinwheels. So we're going to start off with our bison skirt steak here. You can use a flank steak if you'd like. Uh, it really just depends on your preference. But first and foremost, we are going to start with a butterfly cut right down the center. And we're going to want to make sure that we make both sides as even as possible when we do this. Once we're done making our cut, we're going to want to spread the meat across the board evenly. You want about the same thickness on either side of the skirt steak. And now we're just going to start tenderizing it and get each side about half the size it originally was. You want to make sure to not put too much force into your hits here because you don't want to cut through the meat entirely, but just enough to thin this out quite a bit. Next, we're going to dive into seasoning and fillings. So first and foremost, we're going to start off with some salt and pepper. For this steak today, we're doing about a tablespoon of salt and pepper. Just gonna spread it on there nice and evenly. Just like that. Perfect. Go ahead and rub that in there. Make sure that gets in each and every crevice. Next, we're gonna add our mozzarella cheese. For this size steak, we have about a cup and a half of mozzarella, but more importantly than the amount of cheese, we want to pay attention to uh, just covering up this middle area of your steak to make sure it's not visible anymore, but leaving about a quarter inch around your parameter here. This prevents the internal ingredients from seeping out when it comes to cooking. All right, guys, this is exactly how we want it looking. Just imagine this being like a pizza. You want to save some room for your crust on the edges. That's exactly what we want to do with these pinwheels. So next, we have a half cup of chopped fresh basil, and we're going to add that down the middle here. This is going to carry a lot of that flavor and really be a key ingredient in our recipe today. Then finally, we're gonna come in with a half cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese to kind of add that salty, more savory effect here. Go over our basil and mozzarella, just like that. Now look at that, you guys. We've got a beautiful skirt steak, all seasoned up, ready to go to create these pinwheels. So how we're gonna start this, is we're gonna go lengthwise end to end. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna start rolling the steak up on this end. And we're not gonna we're not gonna tuck it or add a whole lot of pressure. Kind of naturally let it roll into itself just like this. Beautiful. That's perfect. We want to end up with something like this. Next, we're going to take some cooking twine here that is oven friendly. We're going to go ahead and cut off a piece like this. And we're going to slide it under our pinwheel here. Look for right about where the center is. And we're going to go ahead and Hide that off just like this. Beautiful. We're gonna slowly work our way outside. The reason I like to do this is we're not forcing all of the ingredients to the center of the pinwheel here. We're making sure we get as even amount of cheese and herbs to the outside of these pinwheels as we are in the center trying to create as much consistency as possible. So once our pinwheel is looking like this, we're ready to cut. So what we're gonna do is start with a center cut right down the middle. And go just like this. Make sure you have a sharp blade for this. You don't wanna apply too much pressure, forcing those ingredients out. And 
look at how beautiful those pinwheels look. I mean, those are just gorgeous. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now we're going to cut in between each piece of cooking twine we threw on there. Now what's important to note is for these end pieces, you're gonna have a lot of extra play here. That's just excess we're gonna go ahead and cut off. We're not gonna try and work that into a wheel of its own. So about the same distance you cut from the twine in the opposite direction, we're gonna to want to cut and get rid of that excess meat. This can be tossed in the pan, cooked and used later, but in order to keep the integrity of the pinwheels we do have, we're going to go ahead and get rid of those end pieces off there. And just like that, we have some beautiful bison pinwheels ready to be thrown on the pan to be seared. While our pinwheels are searing, this is about the time we want to go set our oven to 375 to get ready for cooking. And just like that, 10 minutes later, you have these beautiful bison pinwheels. This is an incredibly simple recipe with the right touch of elegance that's sure to wow your family and friends. Go ahead and follow us for more recipes that you can make better with bison.